Ruby Sapphire Popsicle Control is still a good deck. You should be trying it now because you can still win with Popsicle Control in today's meta. Let me show you how. Yo, welcome back to the channel, adventurers. It's Manticore here in the Manticore's Tavern. New Popsicle Control deck here for you guys. Ruby Sapphire was a deck that completely fell off. After the release of Rise of the Floodborne, people were like, this is really good. And then people were like, okay, this deck really sucks. But I'm telling you, this deck is still good. This deck can win. This deck is still a top tier-ish deck. Um, I definitely wouldn't put it in tier one with Ruby Amethyst, but it's definitely up there. It's definitely worth trying it out. And here is the deck list, guys. First of all, we are starting with the four... Felicia's here. Check it out. One drop. Inkable. Three strength. That three strength as a one drop is a direct counter to the snakes, the foxes, the goats, the rabbits, and many other cards that are very good in the meta right now. Specifically Ruby Amethyst, because that's what we're looking at. Um, the three willpower is a good spot in a great spot right now and having a character with three strength at a one drop is the answer to that so gotta play the felicia's here guys popsicle control don't get me wrong is a control deck but we have to be able to control the early game as well if we let our opponent get away with that huge quest and having a bunch of characters in play but bouncing over and over again we're not going to have an answer felicia too good gotta play it all right moving on we have the baby lady tremaines here we're playing three of them two drop non-inkable two two she is a good trade into some two twos so you can trade her into the Malef the uh maleficence that draw um the aggro variant of some cards so if you're playing against amber amethyst you can trade use her in to go into the lilos uh and the baby maleficence that can quest for a bunch the pinocchios that can quest for a bunch and then on top of that, because we're playing a control deck, we are able to use this Lady Tremaine to go ahead and make our opponent lose lore if they have more lore than us as well. And then on top of that, we are also going to use this Baby Tremaine to go ahead and shift into the Big Tremaine, and we all know how great that is. Next, we are playing the four Queen of Hearts. Don't get me wrong, Queen of Hearts is not the greatest, but she is very good. The reason why she's not the greatest is because of her 2-2. I wish she was like a 3-2 or maybe like a 3-1 rush or something like that. That'd be great to be able to challenge and be able to have a direct uh, counter to the bounce cards. But she is still very good because then you're going to be able to couple that with having like a Haram in play sometimes. Or, you know, any of your other characters in play to go ahead and double challenge or just get rid of like a Stitch or some other 2-2s. Two I mean, guys, Queen of Hearts is still good. She's a rush character. Rush characters are good in general. And... I do appreciate this card a lot. Next, we do have the Hiram Flaversham here. However you say his name, I don't know how to say it. We all know this card is very good. We need him in Popsicle Control because we're playing a total of 16 items and we're going to need some of those 16 items to be able to banish and draw cards. And then moving on, we do have Nick Wild. Lots of people were saying that Nick Wild is a win more card. However, I think that Judy Hops is a win more card. I think that Judy Hops is not necessary, whereas Nick Wild is absolutely necessary because we're only playing four popsicles and only 16 items in total. With this deck, I find myself going through my entire deck very quickly, and it gets to the point where I'm like, okay, I'm running low on cards in my deck. I have to be careful and not just draw like crazy. And be, part of that reason is because we are recycling with the popsicles, constantly putting them back into our hand with the Nick Wild and the Tamatoas, constantly drawing off the popsicle that we put in play, constantly drawing off the Maurice that we're putting in play, constantly drawing off the Hiram that we're using to banish the popsicle, and so on and so forth. It's a huge cycle, and we're going to have lots of options in our hands. Next, we do have Maui. Maui is absolutely necessary in this deck because of his six strength here. The five willpower is good but it's not the best. I wish it was up one more. And we're going to use this Maui to basically challenge into almost everything in the game and be able to uh, keep in play on top of having Popsicles because we all know that Popsicle draws, but Popsicle can also heal. And we're going to use the Popsicles to heal our Mauis in many situations. 
Lady Tremaine is to be able to have that spot removal. It shifts. We're going to be able to put her in play for only four instead of hard casting her for six. And she quests for two. Very good card. We are also play, playing the three scars here. Um, I think that maybe sometimes the scar is a little too much in the deck. I feel like maybe two would be better. But the scar comes in handy quite a bit because it acts as almost like a pseudo be prepared because we're going to be able to use the scar to challenge banish uh, with a rush heal with popsicle challenge banish rush with healing another popsicle and keeping its strength up and then keeping it in a ready position rather than exerted uh because of his ability and next we have the tomatoas we're playing 16 items we're going to use tomatoa to constantly recycle those items and then be able to quest for a lot once we finally get the tomatoas in play maleficent's a very good card here we're going to be able to get to a very high number of ink in our ink well quite easily and we're gonna have to be able to start capitalizing on the maleficence once we get there moving on to songs and actions we do have the one jump ahead one jump ahead is a card that allows us to put a card from the top of our deck into the inkwell face down but do keep in mind that it is a card in your hand and if you you have yourself in a position in which you don't have the ink to be able to really do it and you also want to get another card in the ink well, but you don't have any inkables in your hand, you could use the fishbone quill. Make sure that you're not always wasting your ink and uh, card knowledge and stuff like that on one jump ahead. You could make use of the fishbone quill to where your opponent does not know what you're inking and things like that. So it, these are kind of interchangeable. You have to know how to play the deck and know when to play the deck and when to play a certain card and things like that. Next, we have the be prepared, absolutely necessary. It's gonna help you every single game. There's not gonna be a single time where you win this game or win with this deck without playing be prepared be prepared absolutely necessary you got to play it at four and then we go into the 16 items the shield of virtues are to ready our characters to prevent them from getting banished uh in a challenge to be able to uh you know potentially sing with the card and then ready it back up and then challenge with it um quest ready it up and then challenge with it many different things we can do with the shield of virtue popsicle control obviously we'd have to have the popsicles for draw and healing fishbone quills to be able to put any card into our inkwell face down and then the maurice is workshop for some draws don't forget to like and subscribe everybody leave some comments down below about what you guys think about popsicle control in today's meta around post holiday season 2023 we're moving into 2024 guys i think this deck can come back i think this deck is worth playing if we play it the right way we have to play some early game threats such as the felicia's lady tremaine's and queen of hearts that will turn the deck around and be able to have a lot more capability of competing against the meta but go into some gameplay let's check it out so lots of people just don't think this is a good deck anymore however i would like to disagree with that statement i think that this deck is still capable of doing really great things and actually be able to beat some of the more relevant meta cards right now as long as you are doing some of the things that you need to do and one of the things that we need to do was not drawn into our hands so with this we run a lot of early game threats uh, we need to be able to not rely on late game because obviously we all know how that goes when our opponent is just bouncing things often and over and over again and stuff like that so we need to actually try to control the early game with early game threats such as cards like felicia uh the baby lady tremaine the rushing queen of hearts and things of that nature so let's see what we can do here it looks like our opponent is playing emerald steel a discard a variant of the deck and we have to be careful not to uh deck our Selves out here because our opponent may likely have uh, a whole new world here so we're gonna have to just try start discarding and we're not drawing into any of those things that we needed to play i mean literally at least a tenth of our deck is those early game threats and we aren't seeing them at all uh we're playing a total of four felicia four of the baby tremaine and four of the big queen of hearts 12 cards out of a 60 card deck and we're not seeing a single one but it is what it is and we'll see what we can do next 
Okay, so now we are at least able to get something in play. So we can go ahead and do that. And um, I guess we can put Maurice's workshop in play and then just pass there. Um, playing a total of 16 items. Popsicle control, and we're not seeing any of the popsicles either, which is unfortunate. Uh, this algorithm here that we had for this hand is not ideal. <laughs> He's likely going to do something to make me discard. Okay. So now we have the Queen of Hearts rush, like I said earlier. So now that is an option that we have. Let's go ahead and just get rid of this Nick Wild. To be honest, I really want to get rid of the Prince John here just to eliminate that threat and not have it be something I have to worry about at all. Um, it does quest for two as well. And then on top of that, my Queen of Hearts will also still be alive. So this is part of the reason why the early game threats are absolutely necessary right now normally we don't have anything to do basically until we get to turn five with maui sure we could probably make some use of like the nick wilds that we maybe had but i mean who wants to waste a nick wild on something like that or we could probably have the judy hops we do not have the judy hops in our deck this this game so we'll see how it does go with the following turn our opponent did ink a cinderella not sure if they have another one in hand to go ahead and shift into this cinderella with or not um they have a lucifer uh we can only get rid of one thing um which are two characters uh and with that said it's likely gonna have to be that and honestly like honestly i feel like we need to keep the hiram in our hand so we're gonna get rid of the scar and the maui we've done really what we needed to do we wanted to make sure we got rid of the john silver or not the john silver the prince john before he got that lucifer in play and now we can make some plays after that we do have a baby Tremaine. It is non-inkable though, so there is that. Uh, let's, to be honest, it quests for two. That's kind of okay. Um, let's just go with the Fishbone Quill. We'll draw a card. We'll ink. Uh, I don't want my opponent to see what it is I ink. So maybe we just go with the Fishbone Quill. And honestly, maybe we get rid of the Lady Tremaine and ink this Tamatoa as well. It sets us up for a next turn here. Um, if our opponent doesn't, doesn't make us lose two cards, that is at least. Um, we're not really drawing any cards. We had really terrible draws, but it is what it is. Our opponent may make us discard. They might not. Okay, so they have a Bucky. They're going to go with the Prince John. No um floodborns to make me discard anything right now they don't do that okay so now we can go for playing a popsicle we'll draw one off of that and then we'll draw one off of that um i guess we can honestly just draw one off of the popsicle don't want to draw on that let's ink a flabbersham we'll put flabbersham in play and then we'll use it to discard a popsicle we'll draw some more cards um and then we can maybe keep this nick wild but do i want to do i want to keep the nick wild or not 
because I can get that popsicle back, but it, how important is that popsicle? Nick Wild might be important. Yeah, we'll pass. Okay. All right, so we have seven in the inkwell. Our opponent has a good threat on board, I would say. Like, it's pretty, it's pretty threatening. Um, they have three cards in hand. If they have anything to make me discard, uh, you know, simply just having a Bloodborne character would be threatening enough. <coughs> he goes for the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo. Yep, gonna make me discard two cards. That is okay. I think here we'll actually go ahead and just get rid of uh, Hiram and the Maurice's Workshop. Yeah. Oh, and now he's got plenty of cards. Oh, that that was good. That was really good with that bibbity bobbity boo. And now we're like like we're drawing lots of cards, but my opponent is keeping up the threat quite a bit. Now we can if he quests with that Bucky, that is a way for us to go ahead and get rid of it. And then he goes for that. Sure. Hmm, that's a tough one. Because uh, Lady Tremaine is going to be very pivotal for our success. But maybe we'll have to get rid of the Nick Wild. He'll draw a card. We draw into a Felicia. Um, he does not quest with the Bucky, which is a good idea for him. Like that was very good for him. Let's go ahead and quest with Hiram. Let's put Popsicle out. We'll draw two and then we get a be prepared. Now this sets us up almost perfectly. So we have to be prepared. We can get rid of his entire board. We can follow up with Lady Tremaine our next turn. So I think that now we are actually doing quite okay. We'll get rid of all of that. Let's um Go with the fishbone quill, get rid of that. And now I could put Felicia in play, or I could just keep it in hand, potentially make it. Ooh, I I mean, just in case I have to top deck the Maleficent and I don't want my opponent to make me discard somehow using a hypnotize or a sudden chill or something like that. I think that it'd be best to go ahead and do that. So I think that I'm playing three Maleficence here in this deck. Um, should be more than enough. I think that I've only put one in the inkwell. I do play some scars. We do have the big Tremains as well. My opponent is going to play that Lucifer. Very decent play there. Yep. Hence why I wanted to ink the other card that I had. So now we can go ahead and play this Fishbone Quill. We'll go ahead and draw some cards. Let's put this Baby Tremaine in play, make him lose some lore, and then we will pass there. Now that Baby or that Lucifer is being threatened by my Baby Tremaine, um, he will have the Benja. He's going to get rid of my workshop. That's fine. We are at this point kind of just playing off the top of the deck. Anything that we draw into realistically should be perfectly fine. I would hope. Um, we just draw into a Felicia, so we'll go ahead and put that in play, and then we'll just challenge into the Lucifer here, get rid of it, uh, and, and now we'll just have to pass. The Benja can quest for two, and so no, the Jafar is only one. Um, for going second, I think, and especially against a discard deck, we're holding up kind of well. We're doing decent. 
We're not doing terrible. Um, he has played, capitalized on Maleficent, or not Maleficent, Lucifer three times. He played a M Lucifer, played Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo, put the Lucifer back in his hand, played it again, and then he drew into another one later on and was able to just go ahead and, yeah. He's played three Lucifers. We draw into another Felicia, so now we can go ahead and just do this. Challenge into the Benja, and these are why, you know, like the early game threats are pretty decent. Like Felicia being a three drop or a three strength character at a one drop is very good. Um, obviously, we're playing a discard right now, so we're kind of struggling in the in the race kind of, but we're doing all right. Um, you know, we could easily just top deck another Lady Tremaine. Uh, Maleficent, um, be prepared. Uh, another Maurice's workshop. Uh, Maui. Like, we have options. We have plenty of options. <laughs> and now it is our turn again. So now we can just go ahead and play the Felicia again. We're making it to where we have no cards in our hand. Our opponent's not able to capitalize on the discards here. <laughs> and they bl and they play the the Tinkerbell. Yeah, that's gonna get rid of my Felicia. Pretty good play. Good top deck. And now we draw into a scar, which is good. Um, yeah, we're gonna have to just play the scar. Challenge here. Ready it back up. We can't quest with the Lady Tremaine, honestly, because if we do, that'll give our opponent an option to go ahead and challenge into it and then put two more on the Scar. That's not what we want. Um, let's see, we've gotten rid of two Nick Wilds. Uh, opponent's doing some, some things. Woo. <laughs> Strength of a Raging Fire. Wow. All right, so it looks like us and our opponent are just playing off the top deck right now. Uh, Felicia. Why have I drawn into three Felicias? Like, I have plenty of other cards in my deck. Eh, that was probably a bad idea. Because now we can just challenge with the Tinkerbell. And then put the other two on Felicia. I shouldn't have quested. But I'm not drawing into any of my big characters I would like to see. And that's fine. It's okay. Ring the bell. Um, sure. I guess that you could do that. And now we draw into a be prepared. Now, I think that we are kind of sitting okay. We had we couldn't quest with Felicia, so that's fine. Our opponent is off the top deck. We're actually in a better position than our opponent is right now. Um, just because of these cards that we're getting right now. Prevent some discards from happening. see what he's drawn into we're not really drawing into anything great um there goes a maui so that'll help for sure we'll go ahead and get rid of that bucky now and pass now we are also playing four tomatoas so we're gonna be able to get a bunch of items back if we can capitalize on some tomatoas if we happen to draw into them but we haven't drawn into any yet so there is that um, yeah, it's going to put some damage on Tinkerbell. That's okay. Let's go ahead and just put this. Hmm. I think I kind of just want to use Fishbone Quill on this. And pass.
what's the opponent got so now again we can get into tamatoa haven't seen a single sh uh, shield of virtue yet um let's see so i've seen just about everything else he's gonna put the bibbity okay yeah put that back okay all right now we draw into the tamatoa fantastic we'll do this we will actually go ahead and take maybe maybe maurice's workshop because we can quest with the next thing yeah we can quest with tomatoa next turn get the popsicle put it in play and then draw cards off the maurice's workshop so i think that the maurice's workshop is better and then we'll be able to draw off the popsicle as well in a single turn so we'll be able to refuel our hand quite a bit compared to what it was before and our opponent is in a pretty bad position you know he's playing emerald steel um he has no like realistic he realistically doesn't have any spot removal yeah he's playing like ring the bell i think is what he had um which could get rid of my maui but that's fine as long as i have my tamatoa tamatoa is gonna be where my damage comes from and where i need to capitalize on doing some things so now he can quest with that and he's not going to so we can actually go ahead and quest with tamatoa We'll use this. We'll put a popsicle in play. Draw off the popsicle. Draw on Maurice's workshop. We'll go ahead and draw on the shield of virtue. Yeah, see now we're now we're cooking with some butter. All right, so now we will go ahead and get rid of the popsicle. Oh, yeah. Draw on the popsicle. Um, we can ink a... I don't really need the Queen of Hearts anymore. We're running low on cards, though, so we need to be very careful here. Um, and then... We can actually get rid of a quill, maybe. This will allow us to go ahead and ready the Tomatilla again. And now we can just pass there. <coughs> we have another Maui. We have Be Prepared. We have only 18 cards left in deck. So we got to play it kind of carefully. Make sure we're not decking ourselves out. But we also have to kind of play kind of quick. So we want to make sure that our opponent's not able to win the lore race uh, against us. Let's see what they do. What are they going to do? This is going on a 20-minute match. I was struggling against these draws, man. I'm telling you. Or these uh, discards that he had. Okay, so... We can actually... Play the Nick Wild. That'll get us a Popsicle back. We could play a Popsicle. Draw a card. Um, Honestly, we'll just cancel that. Uh, we can, play this, oh, he's gonna surrender, yep, guys, I'm telling you, we were coming back from that, we were coming back, let's go, alright, so, this is not a terrible hand, but it's not the best hand, I mean, too many fishbone quills is, is honestly too many fishbone quills, so we don't need that many. Maybe we can keep two just in case, but I think that having the Queen of Hearts and Felicia in hand early game may be worth having. And we just draw into another Tomatoa. So unfortunately with that, we're probably going to have to get rid of a Tomatoa. And then we can play a Felicia. Let's go ahead and pass there. Honestly, I feel like maybe the Felicia could have be kept, 
which could have been kept in hand um just in case we were probably playing against you know a ruby um you know i think that maybe keeping felicia in hand would have been better for playing the second turn but that is fine our opponent did play the stitch i don't want to give them any indication that we have a queen of hearts so we'll go ahead and just ink the fishbone quill here and then we'll probably play the one jump ahead get us to three in the ink well and now we are a full turn ahead of our opponent in inkwell or ink um in the inkwell yeah inkwell with ink ink and inkwell something like that whatever so they're gonna ink that um they're probably not okay well there is the simba it's not going to be put in ex exerted so that is i wouldn't say problematic but that is something our opponent is able to do um let's go ahead and just ink the or put maurice in here now we could ink a queen of hearts but i kind of honestly want to keep it you know because he could potentially uh ex exert the simba um giving us the opportunity to challenge into it with felicia and then challenge into stitch with the queen of hearts but i don't think that's going to happen um let's go ahead and just ink the queen of hearts now just get it out the way there's no point in hold on to it i don't think my opponent's gonna quest with the simba or sing with simba so no point in holding on to that just not holding there's no point in holding on to something for a just in case situation you need to hold on to it okay so he exerts the with the with the simba that's fine okay it's okay it's okay it's okay it's okay uh yeah okay so now he puts the aerial in play yeah this is fine it's fine could have kept the freaking queen of hearts i was literally just telling you guys not to hold on to it for a just in case situation and here he is doing the thing so so great to see that all right um no point in challenging just yet let's see what we can actually maybe even draw into off of the fishbone quill what i want yeah fishbone quill just in case we have to ink something too so we can go ahead and do that um well i wish we had another inkable but we don't uh so we're gonna have to ink honestly scar and probably put this in the inkwell as well as much as i don't want to i mean we're kind of playing a little bit behind but that's fine um we just have to have one more in the inkwell to be able to play off of the be prepared our opponent is gonna have maybe some others it looks like i've only seen ambers i don't think i've seen a single uh steel anywhere which is fine by me let's go ahead and i kind of honestly just want to wait until he draws some more um let's go for maurice's workshop we'll do the thing there uh then we'll just ink that there and pass Holding on to be prepared just in case he puts like a really big threat on board. Um, I want to make sure I can go ahead and get rid of that as well. Uh, so there we go. That can quest for three. Uh, I'm glad I held on to be prepared, which could come in handy here now. So now we also draw into another be prepared, which is fantastic. So I don't think that we really have anything to worry about now um yeah we'll just go ahead and play that be prepared he could probably be playing amber ruby i don't think i've seen any steel cards or maybe he's just playing straight up mono i don't i don't know um but i kind of want to keep that uh so we'll go ahead and put maurice is workshop and play um yeah and then we'll do some of these and then we can actually go ahead and put a Lady Tremaine in play, make him lose some lore. 
uh, and I don't want to get rid of the Maleficent nor the Harem Flevershan because they're both pivotable card, pivotable cards, pivotal, pivotable, pivotal, pivotable. I don't know which one's right and which one's wrong. Okay, so here we can actually, what do we do? Um, put Harem in play. We'll use it. Uh, we'll get rid of a workshop. I think that three is just too many. I, I want to keep the fishbone quill just in case. Uh, <laughs> hmm. We can ink mm, Maui. Maybe I should have used fishbone to get rid of Scar. Put a fishbone in play, and then we'll draw one off of this, and then we can go ahead and quest. And now we're able to start coming back so it's definitely like a late game kind of deck but we do have cards to allow us to make early game plays such as those felicia's and those queens and those are all very important cards <laughs> all righty so now we do have the lady tremaine here so now we can actually go with a i think i kind of just want to hard cast it Yeah, we're just going to hard cast that. Make our opponent get rid of the aerial. He won't be able to sing with it now. Uh, and then we can probably get rid of a fishbone. We still have one in hand. Drawn to... Okay, so now we're like, like we're just sitting in a very good position here. These are all of our high threat cards that we really need to see in order to win this game. So no matter what our opponent puts in play, they flood the board, we have some be prepared to play. Our opponent puts some uh, a high threat character in play, we also have the happy. Like we have things to go off of here, and now we're just gonna go ahead and capitalize on everything we have in our hand, honestly. Like it's just, it's we're in a very good position. I don't even think we've had any single popsicle controls, but after putting in another Lady Tremaine, our opponent's just like, yeah, I've had enough. This is atrocious. So we get another dub. 